Hey there, welcome back to the studio. It's great to see you. Uh, my name is Elizabeth, if we haven't met before, and I make stuff. Um, a lot of what I do is quilting, pajagi, and embroidery, but you'll see sometimes other things that sneak in. If it's something that can be made, I'll probably try to make it. Uh, so I just have a little update of what's been going on in the studio. So we're coming up to the end of August is coming up pretty quickly. And so this has been a pretty busy summer for me. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on, but all of my kids have been home this summer, which hasn't happened for a while. And my husband has been home. He hasn't been traveling. So it's been a while since all six of us have lived together. And of course, uh, when you're living with kids who are teenagers and young adults, that is a different kind of busy than if you have a whole bunch of preschoolers. Because obviously it's nice that I don't have to uh, watch them every second of the day to try and keep them from killing themselves and each other. But then it's different because it's like who's working, uh, who's going to be out with their friends, who needs a ride, who needs to borrow a car. And so there's all that kind of organization. And of course I also want to spend time with them because I know that now the end is in sight that this might be the last time that we all six live together and so um there's all of that stuff going on as well but don't worry in between all of that family uh, business i have still been able to do a whole bunch of stitching and so um here's an update of some of the stuff that i've done uh the first one is interesting this is a sneak peek of my quilt block that's going to be coming up for September. So I'm part of Quilt Block Mania, which is a bunch of quilt designers. And every month we offer a free pattern for a block. And there's a theme that things go around. So the theme for September is fall. And then as Canadian, I think of a lot of things for fall. But the one big thing that is fall and quilting is flying geese. Flying geese was an obvious choice for that block. Um, if you've seen my other blocks, you've seen all my blocks that I'm doing for Quilt Block Mania are pretty traditional blocks, but I'm embellishing them with hand embroidery so that if you like them, you can also collect them, do it as a block of the month, and then put them together. It'll be um, a great project. And I'm going to have uh, mine put together pretty soon so you can see what it'll look like. So the flying geese, first of all, uh, is interesting because um, I had initially thought I would have the big triangle of flying geese be a color and the little triangles would be um, the background fabric. And then when I cut my pieces out, I cut them out backwards. And so instead of recutting, I just change my whole design to fit that. So this is a sneak peek of what it's going to look like. So you can see the background fabric is the big triangle and then the um, accent fabrics are the little um, triangle. So I don't know what is actually supposed to be the geese, but it's the V's of flying geese, which is a common, um, a common sight that we see in where I live in the fall. There's always V's of geese flying south. Um, I do also have another little uh, warning about this. Um, in the tutorial that I have for this block, I have the four at a time flying geese. So you cut a big square and then four little squares. And um, you can see the whole tutorial of how to do flying geese that way. But there is one um, situation where you have a line and you have to stitch a quarter inch away on either side of the line. Now, when I'm doing half square triangles, sometimes if I draw a diagonal line, I'll stitch a tiny bit under quarter of an inch because I know I'm going to be trimming down my final piece and then it gives me um, space to work with. However, with flying geese, you can't do that. It has to be a quarter of an inch. You can't do slightly less and trim down as I did the first time it's like oh yeah I can trim this down and I forgot that no this one has to be a quarter of an inch so on my first try you can see those flying geese didn't work out so 
um, do what I say, not what I do. This, uh, I was debating, could I get away with this? And then I thought, no, this is really bad to be a sample from a designer. Um, so I'm going to save that block. I might use that for something else. But then I did end up having to recut my pieces anyways. Um, but by then I was already uh, attached to this design. So I decided to still go with it, even though I did have to recut my pieces anyways. So watch for this coming in September. This will be a free quilt block pattern for the month of September. And then after that, it will be available for sale. And if you want to see um, the other blocks that coordinate with this, then you can see the other ones and they are available for sale. Um, I'm also excited to say I have my new Zoom workshops coming, coming up for the fall. Um, there are not as many as there have been in the past because I'm going to be away middle of October to middle of November. Fingers crossed. I'm really excited um, that I'm going to be going on a trip to Korea. I haven't been back there for 12 years. It's 12 years since I lived there. I haven't been back. I'm hoping to go back. We were planning to go in 2019. Didn't work out. So we're like, oh, we can go in 2020. And of course, we didn't. And so the first part of my trip, I'm going to be doing the Korean textile tour with Young Min Lee. So excited about that. So we're going to be doing a lot of textile related um, things. And then at the end of that, my husband's flying over and then we're just going to do a personal tour and go see um, the places where we lived and some of those kind of things. So I'm really excited about that. So that does mean there's a little hole in my schedule for online workshops, but don't worry, I do still have um, lots of online workshops. So these are live on Zoom and you can sign up individually. And so you can take a class with me from anywhere in the world. So just pay attention to time zones. So they're listed on my site from um, Eastern Standard Time, but I try and have a variety of morning um, afternoon and evening classes. So hopefully there's something that will work for you. Um, so you can check the link to see when my new fall workshops are and hopefully you can join me for one. I'd love to see you in a workshop. Um, there are always lots of fun and uh, we usually make beautiful projects and a lot of times these are projects that you can get finished in the workshop time. Um, and so I would love to see you in a workshop. Now, you might remember previously, um, I was really overthinking uh, color placement with my variegated thread, but I did finish my Hardinger embroidery and there it is, if I can get it. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out and I found this square frame with a mat and I, I really like how that looks and so um, this has been just sitting, so it has a little stand, it's been sitting on a uh, um, counter that I have. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it there or hang it on a wall, but I do really like how that looks. I think that turned out really great, and you'll be able to see the pattern for this. You'll be able to get it. It will be in my Introduction to Hurting Your ebook, which will be out any day, so you can watch for that if you... Um, like that pattern that would be available there i've also been embroidering like a uh, mad person trying to finish up my um, samples for my embroidery now you've heard me kind of allude to this my christmas embroidery so there's something uh, big coming up so if you like embroidering little projects and you like christmas then i think you're really going to like the uh, stitch along that I have coming up in the fall. So I've been working on different ways to finish the embroideries. And so I have some little snowflakes there. There's a bunch of snowflakes. There's some wreaths and Christmas trees. So there's a whole bunch of different um, stitching themes and different ways to finish it. So um, look for more information about that coming up in September. I'm really um, excited about those and how those have turned out. 
I also have a quilt that I finished, another quilt finish, and this is a scrappy piece. This is just to use up scraps, and it's a simple little um, fence rail. So all these pieces are just two and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and then I randomly put them into squares and then put the squares together. And so um, I love how this turned out. And it's just a fun scrappy quilt. So it's just one of those quilts to um, use up what you have, uh, what you've been given from other people. And it just looks really nice. And so I'm happy with um, how that turned out. This is probably gonna be donated to a charity with, through my guild. Um, and I think that's uh, one of the great things with quilting is that we can share uh, with others and help others who just need a little bit of encouragement. Uh, what else? Oh, another fun project that I've done. And I did this uh, while my daughter was home uh, before she goes back to high school. Um, it was just a fun project is I had a bunch of old um, blankets and they were getting to be worn out. You can see the edges are kind of worn. Um, a couple of them had actually holes that were worn right in them. And so I'm looking at um, what I can do with these and to be um, upcycling things and more sustainable with fabrics that I'm using. And so I wanted to use these, but they were all just like the white with yellow stripes on them. And so my daughter and I, we dyed them to be a bunch of um, fun colors. And so now I have these, so now it's gonna be fabric to play with, to make something. So you can be watching to see what I make with this, but it's a nice big stack of fabric. And so these are heavier, so it's not gonna be a traditional quilt that I'm doing with those, but I do have some fun ideas. So I'll be watching to see what I do with this. And also along the same lines of um, reduce, reuse, recycle, and sustainability, my son, one of my sons, had a bunch of sweatshirts that he was getting rid of. They're kind of worn and old. And so I took those and I'm cutting those apart to use those for a project as well. And so um, you can be watching to see what I do with this and it's a little different because it's stretchy a little bit stretchy kind of knit fabric but I'm having fun um, playing with those so I'm not doing like a t-shirt quilt exactly but um, you can see what I do with that and then uh, something else has happened this summer that was not a happy occasion but one of my good quilting friends who is a member of, her, of the guild that I'm in. Um, she lived close by. She actually um, passed away this summer after a long um, battle with cancer. So it wasn't really shocking because she's been sick for a long time, but it did seem to be pretty fast at the end. And um, her name was Karen. And all the things that you think about Karen with the stereotype, she was the opposite of that. She was so um, caring about others and encouraging and kind. And you can see at her funeral service, they kept having to get more chairs. They had chairs set out and they kept having to bring more and more because so many people were showing up to um, celebrate her and remember her. Um, and she donated all of her um, quilting and sewing stuff to our guild. And so, um, a few of us picked it up from her house and then we got together to sort through all her fabric and tools and stuff like that, um, which was very generous of her. And so we're going to be able to um, share this, make things in her memory. But the one thing that we found in her, um, in her things, I found this maple leaf window hanging that she made. And this was, this is one of my patterns. This was one of the first workshops that I taught was with her. It was kind of a 
practice workshop. And I'm going to be keeping this just in memory of her. because She was always so um, encouraging to me in my quilting business. Um, and she gave lots of good feedback. She took a lot of practice workshops when I was practicing teaching a workshop or practicing a new lecture. Um, she was always so um, encouraging and kind. And so I'm really happy to have this as a memory of her. Um, she, uh, she quilted with what she had. She didn't spend lots of money on all the new fabric collections. She just got whatever she could, but everything she did was um, from the heart and with caring and love for people. And so I think it's just a good reminder that um, when you make things, of, of course, it's easier if you have good tools and good supplies to work with, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is um, to make things with love and care for people, because if you are a uh, perfect artist who wins all the awards at the big shows, but nobody likes you because you're just not a nice person, then what good is that? And so it's just a good reminder to think about um, what things are important. And um, that's a good lesson I learned from Karen. So thanks, Karen. I will keep this, uh, this window hanging um, in my review and remember how kind and supportive you were. And so uh, that's what I've been working on around here. So I have uh, lots of big things coming up in September. So be sure to um, follow me on social media or check out my uh, website so you can see what's coming up. Um, especially if you like Christmas and you like hand stitching, you're not going to want to miss that. So um, I hope that you have a great end of the summer and that you're getting back into things for fall. Uh, I wish you well. Um, if you have any comments about any of these projects, the things I'm working on, be sure to um, leave a comment. And I will see you soon.